Today, we will look at the approach to the focal ecogenic lung lesions. The problem is not the diagnosis. The diagnosis is very easy because it is just a focal ecogenic lung. But the problem is that it represents the heterogeneous group of malformations. It can be CPAM, which was called initially as CCAM. It can be pulmonary sequestration, congenital lower emphysema and so on and so forth. And Another problem is that there is overlap of pulmonary lesions. These are called the hybrid lesions. And the prenatal diagnosis is not always confirmed postnatally. So, to form a statistics to get a follow-up is difficult in cases of ecogenic lung lesions. Today, we will just look at the approach to the ecogenic lungs. So, as a sonologist, you should report following things whenever you see a focal ecogenic lung. That is the side of the lesion right and left lung the size then the type it can be microcystic or macrocystic if it is macrocystic then you look at the presence of dominant cyst the extent of the lesion whether it is affecting the entire lung or a part of a lung presence or absence of polyhydramnios which occurs because of esophageal compression mediastinal shift if any the presence of hydrops or absence of high drops. This happens because of vessel compression. The vascularity of the lesion, which is very important to differentiate between the uh, CCAM and the uh, pulmonary sequestration. You should give a CVR. This is the ratio, which we will again see it later. Then the most important thing is the advice regarding the follow-up. How frequently you should follow up these lesions. One important thing to remember is about the resolution of echogenic lesion. Is there a complete resolution? Actually, it is not always the case. Even though you don't see it on ultrasound, if you do a CT scan postnatally, you will still see a lesion somewhere. So, it is the non-visualization of this lesion on ultrasound as the pregnancy advances. And there will be a persistent lesion on a postnatal CT. Why this happens? Because the lungs become more echogenic as it matures as the pregnancy advances and that's why the lesion and the lung have the same echogenicity and that's why you feel that the lesion has completely disappeared but actual resolution occurs in around 20 to 25 percent of the cases only and the remaining if you do a postnatal CT you will still see a part of a lesion and of course the microcystic lesions tend to resolve more often than macrocystic once you see a cystic lesion most of the times it persists and there is no resolution observed. So, we will see few of these conditions. CPAM which is congenital pulmonary airway malformation which were initially called as CCAM, congenital adenometroid malformation. Now, it is called a CPAM. There are different classifications but rather than going to those histologic pathologic classifications, uh, what is important for us is the ultrasound appearance. So, it can be cystic or it can be solid. Of course, it can be mixed, mixed cystic and solid. DD of cystic will be congenital diaphragmatic hernia, it can be bronchogenic cyst, it can be some cyst of neural origin. The DD of solid ecogenic lesions will be the pulmonary sequestration, which you can differentiate because of vascularity. Another differential is congenital lobar emphysema, there can be bronchial atresia and that's why the entire lung has become ecogenic. So, let's look at this CPAM. So, as I said, how will you describe this lesion? This is involving the left lung. There is a solid ecogenic lesion. There are no cysts noted. The size is so and so with the volume so and so. The ratio CVR was 0.4. There is no mediastinal shift. There is no high drops. It shows a normal pulmonary vascularity. So, the advice will be weekly follow up till 26 weeks. CPAM volume ratio. This is the predictor of perinatal outcome. It is the volume of echogenic lung to head circumference ratio. If it is more than 1.6, that means the echogenic lung volume is going to be more and that is why there are higher chances of developing high drops. If it is less than 1.6 and there is no dominant cyst, then the chances of developing high drops significantly drop to around 2.3%. So, when do you call a cyst a dominant cyst? Sometimes there can be small, small cyst present. But when we are talking about dominant cyst, we are 
saying that the cyst is called dominant cyst if the size of that cyst is more than one third the size of the entire lesion. So then only we will call it as a dominant cyst. How to calculate this ratio? It is easy. You can go to the perinatology.com site and then click on CVR ratio. So what you have to do is take the echogenic lung volume that is three dimensions, the length, height and width into 0.52. So actually what you are supposed to do is you have to enter mass width, mass length, mass height and the head circumference and then press the button calculate and you get the CVR automatically. And in fact, there is a interpretation of this particular thing also given as you can see here CVR of less than 1.6 suggests that the risk of high drops is low. CVR more than 1.6 with the dominant large cyst it increases the risk of developing high drops and this has to be followed for 2 to 3 times per week. Another clue to see the echogenic lung is this the increased distance from the spine to the LA. As you can see here, this distance has significantly increased in a four chamber view. Of course, the close differential of this will be a TAPVC that anomalous pulmonary venous connections. But whenever you see these two pulmonary veins, these ear like projections, you know that this is not a total anomalous pulmonary venous connection and you look for it carefully, then somewhere in some section you will see this focal echogenic lung lesion well. This was another case of cystic CCAM or a CPAM. So this is involving a left lung. This is a mixed lesion cystic and echogenic. Of course you have to do a very careful assessment of the size because some part of it is echogenic and you should be careful to include the entire lesion. There was a shift of mediastinum. There was polyhydramnios. The CVR was 1.7 in fact. But this child also is now 2 years old and there is no intervention done. This is another case at 18 to 19 weeks. It is a large lesion. They are both solid and as you can see here these small small cysts which are seen. But this is not of course a dominant cyst. But there is already a shift of mediastinum. As you can see here the heart is pushed. In fact this lesion is also almost herniated to the other side. The CVR was 1.6 already. This patient opted for termination of pregnancy amongst uh, all the cases which we have seen up till now, this was the only patient who has terminated the pregnancy for the echogenic lungs. So risk of chromosomal, non-chromosomal syndromes is extremely low. There is good prognosis if there is no high drops, if there are no extra pulmonary findings. If there is an high drops, then thoracoamniotic shunt of a large cyst can be attempted. The natural history is very important. The growth of the mass usually shows a very predictable course. Till 26 weeks, there is a rapid growth, then it plateaus and it tends to regress. If no high drops develops by 26 weeks, then it is unlikely to develop later. The resolution, of course, as we said, it is you have to be very careful. It can be just isoechoic to surrounding lung. And in fact, some studies say that it is only in 10 to 20% of the cases that you see the resolution completely. The other pathology is pulmonary sequestration, a part of lung parenchyma which has no communication with the bronchial tree and it has a systemic circulation. So that forms a pulmonary sequestration. It can be intralobar or extralobar, extralobar more commonly diagnosed antenatally, supradiaphragmatic, it can be subdiaphragmatic, unilateral, Left lower is usually the commonest location, triangular uh, lesion apex is towards the mediastinum. In this also the regression or resolution is known, high drops may or may not develop. So more or less similar presentation like CPAM but a different etiology. So as you can see here, typically the left lower lung is involved. This is a triangular echogenic lesion and if you can see here there is a systemic circulation to this particular lesion. This is coming from the IVC. So you know for sure that this is not CPAM and this is a pulmonary sequestration. The other differentials and which are rarer conditions are bronchial atresia and CLE. In bronchial atresia the airway is occluded rather than narrowed 
and in CLE actually what happens is there is a weak or absent bronchial cartilage and this becomes narrowed and this is like an extrinsic compression. The fluid filled lung distal to the atresia becomes echogenic and recurrent infections is the history in fact postnatally. So what about MRI? Should MRI be advised? MRI will provide excellent tissue contrast. It will be very accurate in defining CPAM because a feeding vessel is more easily identified. The bronchial tree is more easily identified. So CPAM, pulmonary sequestration, in fact, it may be a rarer case of a diaphragmatic hernia, which you were just thinking as an echogenic lung. So all these things will be seen better on MRI. Of course, you have to form a differential diagnosis, you have to rule out diaphragmatic hernia. Once you are sure that this is a focal echogenic lesion, then the aim is just a fetal surveillance. So fetal management, the neonatal prognosis, all these will depend on the presence or absence of high drops. So you first differentiate between CPAM, the pulmonary sequestration, then the neonatal surveillance will remain the same. The size, the type, the vascularity, the CVR ratio and the careful assessment for the signs of high drops. That is what you do on a serial ultrasounds.